right, guys, back again for part D of Leaving My Troubles solo. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play the entire solo, and uh, then we'll begin from where we left off in part one last week. All right, here we go. Let's try this. And I will never leave my troubles again. time to practice that. It's still fairly new, but we'll go over the way it's supposed to sound uh, right now, the rest of it. Okay, so if you haven't part, watched part one, definitely go back and watch part one. And uh, if you have watched part one, but you haven't watched the intro and you haven't watched us actually playing this song, go back and watch that as well. Look at the links in the description below of those two videos. Okay, now I'm leaving a link to part one here. It'll take you back to part one. Look at the links below that. It'll take you to the intro, look at the links to that, okay? This is a whole, you know, encompassing feat here. Now, just to let you know, um, okay, from here, that right there section is not in the actual performing of us doing this song. I still have not gotten to perform this solo live with the group yet, the Gilbert family. Um, been working on it so, so that I could get it correct when we go live, okay? So that is not on the actual performance of us playing. You'll actually see uh, what I used to do, and now you can actually compare what I used to do with what I'm doing now. And I, I'm sure you'll agree that now sounds a lot better, it looks a lot better, and it's just more interesting as a solo, okay? So here's where we stopped last time. <laughs> I said that I now I'm, I keep doing this pit thing. I'm actually I actually want to go fast to hammer on. Okay, so that's where we left off. And now when I get to this part, remember when we said in the first part we're switching from box um, two to box three. Now I'm in box four, which is this. of D, which is more based around a B minor shape. Okay, so now when I land on this note, I'm in that shape. <clears throat> and as I said last time, I go, I go over a lot of different ideas about boxes and scale shapes and short scales and different things like that in my Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course, which you can go to by going to bluegrassguitarsessentials.com. And checking out uh, both the DVDs and the webisodes. They're both the same thing, it's just in different formats so that you can kind of pick and choose what's uh, suitable for you. I encourage you to download the first webisode, one and two, for free though. Those are actually free. It talks about the intro to the course and the gear that I use and recommend, as well as kind of a little brief history on where I got my start in bluegrass guitar and how I've evolved as a player. Okay, so that one's free so that you can see if, if uh, this is a course that's right for you. And the best thing about that course is that it includes tabs um, of all this, you know, the, the, the songs, the solos that I work on in the songs, uh, the licks, it's got diagrams of all the scales, the chords, everything. That's what all, where all the tabs and things are if you're looking for tabs. Uh, since I don't really, I'm trying to create content for the channel, I don't have a lot of time to do tabs and all that. And to me, actually, it's just very frustrating to do. So I save that for my actual products and the courses so that I can put the most effort into that, okay? So, from here, we're going to the box four. And basically, I love this little lick in box four. You take that little shape. Now, if you're familiar and you've played bluegrass much at all, this is a very common shape in the key of G. Or on the key of E if you're wanting to get blue. Okay? And that is just one, the middle finger, in this case, uh, the middle finger is on the B string 6th fret, and then the first finger is diagonally. I always think of it as a shape going diagonally that way. I'm going diagonally down to the, let's see, that is the 5th fret E string. So we've got 6th fret B, 5th fret G, or 5th fret E. 
And so I like to bend those strings. Really bluesy. Okay, so when I get there, and right there I'm just kind of noodling around within the box shape, okay? A lot of pull-offs, a lot of going back to a previous note. And every once in a while, I'll come back to that for emphasis. And so, I can't really tell you exactly what I do because it's gonna be different every time in that area. Um, is to get that open uh, D string. Okay, so that's your, your aim is to get to that point. Okay, so I'm just basically, like I said, noodling around. And that is my start point. I'm jumping off from there and just walking down the scale. And I don't even get to these other two points because I slide down. And those notes are there if I need them. Usually I don't even go past the D string. Okay, so let's just say where that comes at is that transition spot will happen on your ring finger on the seventh to the fifth fret D string. Sometimes I go back to that little uh, sixth fret for a little bit more bluesy sound. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna be different every time. Let's see what it would sound like if I did it in context, okay? And if you need to, you can slow that down using that little, you know, gear shift, the gear, gear cog icon uh, in your video player in YouTube. Okay, so I only have a little bit of time uh, before I go to this little high thing, okay? Now, uh, let's do this one more time so that you can get a, a, a better foundation on that. And I'll do it from uh, back a little bit further. So that was different, I had time to think about it. But in the moment, if I'm going fast, it will, it will be different. Slide up. Now I don't. I never thought to do this before. You can do that, but it gives it more of a, <clears throat> a majory sound. So I, I, I usually don't do that. You can, but it's kind of hard to pull that off. So after I do that, that open string. Once again, like I talked about in the last video, open string transitions are key in going up and down the fretboard very quickly. And I talk about that in episodes five and six, if I'm not mistaken, of Bluegrass Guitar Essentials. Okay, so you can check that out bluegrassguitarcentrals.com and let's talk about where this open string transition happens, okay? So that right there, that's why it's important you get that open E as the last note. Because then you can slide up. And usually I'm going to slide up from the uh, eighth to the tenth fret. And that's all you do, okay? That's all you do right there because if you do more, it'll really throw this picking off. And that's going to be down. Pull off, down on the B, back up on the um, E. Okay, so this is the shape. It's kind of like this diagonal we had down here. But I'm actually going up here to the 10th and 8th fret, B and uh, E. And I'm not playing them together, I'm just saying that's the shape. Okay, so we're going to follow some shapes down here. And this is shapes of the pentatonic scale. So we got this one. We got this longer one, which is part of the box uh, four. This is part of box five. Okay, that's the shape. We got a um, whole step, ring and first finger, whole plus a half step, P, 
pinky and first finger. And this is going to be the eighth B and the fifth E. And then we're going to slide him further down to another same shape as the previous one. And now we're going to, we're going to be sliding down a whole step. But we're sliding a whole step down every time. So actually not. We're sliding down a one, two, three fret interval. The slide always happens on that E string, okay? Okay. So then it's a, from here, the downstroke also is where the slide happens. To the fifth fret. To the third fret, okay? So maybe just, Let's just do that little section. I haven't even really went over that. Let's do that little section first, and then I can describe how to think about it and how to do it, okay? So, uh... And then the other stuff happens after that. I'll show you where to get to that. But for now, here's a little good practice. Before you even incorporate this note here, if you'll just get that up down and sliding on the down. We're gonna slide, aim for your fifth fret, okay? So we're going to slide from the 8th to the 5th, and then do the same thing, slide to the 3rd. It's tough to get it to continue to sound. My frets are kind of thick, and every time you pass over another fret, the, the music dies, the, the note dies even further. If I was to slide from here down a couple of frets, you wouldn't really notice it. Three frets. Starting to die out there. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five frets. Six frets. Seven. Eight. Nine, it's almost dead. Ten. Then all the way off. Okay. So you really have to pay attention to pushing down the whole time and you're coming back with it when you're pushing down. So. Up, down, up, down, up, down, slide, up, down, slide. Okay, now I first learned this technique from a guy named Andy Falco, and uh, I watched him play this two different ways, and or two different variations of the same song, and that is Cherokee Shuffle. If you look up Cherokee Shuffle, Andy Falco, there's a version of, of uh, with him and Nolan Pinkley, however you say his name, and another guy, I don't forget his name, Travis something seems like. They're playing Cherokee Shuffle, just three guys sitting on the back porch just playing. They're awesome. And I think it's Andy's second solo. He really hammers down on that uh, little lick for Cherokee Shuffle. And also there's a version with him. I think his name is Chris Eldridge from the Punch Brothers and Josh Williams. Um, and he does the same thing, I think, on that, on that song as well. It's just a little... Um, uh, if I was to do Cherokee Shuffle G, show you where that is. does that and I, I memorized how to do that and I and I figured out a way to use this now before I forget I just remember there's another song that I do this on I'm pretty sure it's on my YouTube channel uh, there's a solo that I did when I was in uh, the group life's pathway with my two stepbrothers and, and a couple other guys um, it's called finally made it home and if you look for that on YouTube on my on my channel go to my channel and, and in the search bar look for finally made it home solo uh i'm if i'm if i'm not mistaken now i could be wrong if i'm not mistaken i did a solo for that and i do another one of these i do one of those little slide things again in that one so that's another good solo to, to watch and uh, kind of perfect it's an old video and if i'm not mistaken i did record it and put it on youtube if i'm not i apologize if i'm wrong but definitely check that one out that's another good uh uh, video for some ideas for some licks. So here's how we get there. Okay, so we've practiced this Okay, now let's do it from the little part where we do the open D string I'm gonna Slide up That's the only time That you're doing an upstroke for a pull-off Usually we slide and transition on that downstroke. Well, this is going to be an upstroke. 
down, up, pull off. And then the note we're going to aim for is that shape we talked about earlier. This is going to be on the 10th fret. And that first finger allows us to transition. The next note we need to aim for is our pinky, 8th fret, B string. Okay, and that upstroke is happening on the B. It's a, it's a, here's, here's the picking. Down, up. Pull off, down, down, up, down, slide, up, okay? Now this is different, okay? This is, this is a little different. Okay, so the picking does shift. <clears throat> so I apologize when we was doing this. It's not exactly like that, but it, it's still teaching you to practice the little picking transition. So that's still, we have that transition uh, benefit of that. It kind of alternates, the picking does. So think of it this way. We're gonna slide up, down, up, transition, okay? And that's a down, then up, down, transition. That leads us to an up here. And then we begin where we started, down, up, transition. That lets us come back to the down, on that sixth fret of the B string. So we got ring finger, now first, it's always first finger, so ring finger, pinky, pinky, okay? Now, don't look at your second finger, and by second finger, I mean the, the one that's, uh, the one besides the uh, first finger. Don't look at this finger or this finger as the transition. Don't keep your eyes on those frets. Keep your eyes on where your first finger's landing. And then the other ones, you just have to remember, pinky, pinky. Okay, as soon as I slide, I'm already, when I slide and hit that note, I'm already looking ahead to where this finger needs to land. Then I slide back, look at, look back to where I need to slide, and then I look ahead to where I need to land. So my eyes are going back and forth a lot. Okay, so that much of it, that's a long section, just keep practicing that. That's a tough thing to do, but uh, especially when you're going very fast. So let's get up to that point again. We're gonna do this little big lick. As soon as we get to that, uh... okay. So that's the down. That's where we ended up. Now we're gonna do this. So that's what, usually what I'm aiming to do. If I can get my fingers to cooperate. So trill. We're gonna lift off that pinky so we can do that trill on the. Leave our first finger barred again. Now usually, I'll just tell you this right now, my finger, first finger does the bar, it's up to this point, it's doing one finger, one single note. But, as soon as that first, that pinky hits that second pinky transition, my first finger lifts off and comes up because I know that there's this big bar section coming up, okay? So that's a down stroke, and then we're gonna do this little trill. So that's an up stroke. Um, first finger to the third finger on the fifth fret, E string. Back to the pinky, that's a down stroke. Up, another trill. Now we're gonna do it on the fourth fret. Down again, so. Okay, so that's a little exercise there. Now that's the same kind of stuff that we did when we was up here. Some, some of the same stuff. So, and that's the goal is to land there, okay? So here's this last part again. See, so since that was a down stroke, we're gonna go up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. That was a pull off, down, up. I think I do a hammer on again there, pull off. Then the goal is to, to do a bar here on the fifth fret G and B and then play that open D and slide up a whole step. So we can land on the D because it starts back in the verse. There's just one thing. Okay, 
Okay, so that it lands back in the verse in D. So the goal is to land back to D. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> let's do it from the where we left off all the way up. Now sometimes I'll forget and I'll hit one note. That's fine because it still lands on the D. Okay, but my goal is to... And it's kind of hard to do that. With this finger barring, it's kind of hard to get this finger to bar too. So you have to kind of lift this up first. And the hard thing to do is you, ha you have to do, they have to lift that up because it's, it's holding this note down. It's the very note previously, right before you get to the, right before you get there. So it's, it's, it's a hard transition to make, but you can get there, okay? Okay, so over the whole solo, here's what we've learned, and then we'll take it away. getting better this is a good practice for me and I hope it's been a good lesson for you it's been a long lesson but I hope it's been worth it I've tried to explain this and break it down as much as I can and since there's no tabs or anything like this uh, for these songs uh, I try to spend as much time as I can breaking it down and giving you the little tips like where the transitions are and the little picking uh, parts and things like that so I encourage you a lot of times I forget to mention this but do take time to watch the picking hand. If you slow this down, don't just watch this hand. Watch where the picking happens, because that's really what sets it all in motion. And if you're having problems with your picking, definitely check out either the full course or web episodes three and four, where I talk about tuning uh, and picking, and that will really get your right hand into shape. And uh, definitely check those out. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video, whatever that may be. I'm going to actually get off here, and I've got a bunch of videos to edit that I've really, really been excited about uploading. Um, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Please check out bluegrassguitaressentials.com for all of your picking, playing, soloing, chords, rhythm, needs uh, concerning bluegrass guitar, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks so much, guys. Keep playing bluegrass, and God bless.